What's up guys, hope you're doing well. I've been meaning to do this video for a while now. Next generation console finally was announced not long ago. Finally, we saw some exclusive games, teasers, gameplays, the hardware reveal and everything. We saw the two different versions and accessories. One thing we didn't get was the price of the PS5. Now, I am a PlayStation 4 user myself. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been looking forward to the PS5. And I think it has been roughly about seven years since the PS4. So we have been hanging on and I'm really looking forward to the new PS5, especially how it's going to affect and change my home theater room. It will possibly replace my Sony 4K player and PlayStation 4 and 125 inches of gaming in 4K is going to be insanely good, especially with the tech it offers. A lot of people hating and saying PS5 is already overrated, which is a big heck no for me, and let me break it down for you on why. First thing is the controversial design. Now for me, I love the aesthetics of this console. Now I'm sure you guys have your own thoughts and everyone to their own, but even though it does look a bit futuristic and there's a lot of memes about it online, I kind of like it. It kind of says they have really thought about the design and trying to give us something different and unique. It has nice curves, nice edges, overall very, very impressive. Looks like a couple of USB ports in the front and a Type-C connector. Also, what gets me is that glowing light in the middle. Oh man, oh man. Now, from what it looks like, you can either stand this console or the rumors are confirmed and can be laid down sideways. So that's a big thumbs up for me because my home theater and my game room, my cabinets are designed for short devices. This console is also the tallest one we've seen, so it should be interesting. Now, I'm not saying anything about any other console and what kind of what looks the best, but in my opinion, they've done an amazing job on the complete look of this console. Okay, so there's two versions. One is the digital PS5 without the optical drive on the side. And for some of us hard copy disc lovers, you have the regular version PS5, which does have the optical drive. Now, I think it's a very smart move by Sony and let me explain why. People like me, which love collecting physical game collection and don't have an amazing internet connection to download games. And number two, by also having the optic drive, we get to use the 4K player, which is very useful. Now with the digital version, yes, looks like a slimmer and doesn't look half kind of finished like the regular PS5, but it does have its benefits by being a little bit cheaper, I'm guessing. Matter of fact, Let's get straight into the price of this console. Now there's rumors everywhere, potentially some leaks and backup articles, but I think personally from the older consoles like the PS3 and the PS4 launch prices, this one having more tech, a lot of more upgrades for the regular PS5 should be I think around the 750 Australian dollar mark and the digital copy roughly about 650, something like that. If Sony wants to sell a lot of these consoles, I don't think that they will be overpricing this console. They need to be reasonable, especially with the digital version, but these are just guesses and hopefully in the near future, we'll get a better idea of the price. Now the hardware of the PS5 is a major upgrade compared to the PS4. Instead of a hard drive, we have the ultra fast 835 gigabytes of SSD, which is a game changer, and an eight core 3.5 gigahertz CPU, and a 10.3 teraflop variable frequency GPU, 16 gigs of RAM in there, which is awesome and is equipped with ray tracing for that realism next level gaming. Some people are saying things like, with that kind of money, they can build a PC, etc. But you can't look at it that way because it doesn't have that same size and space as a PC desktop would. The PS5 also supports 120 Hertz, 4K and 8K outputs, which is ridiculous, as some people don't even have 8K at home, yet alone a 4K TV. Future proofing is definitely there, giving us up to 120 frames per second. Side note to this also, by having all this tech, I heard the PlayStation 5 is quieter than the PS4. I felt like the PlayStation 4 sounded like a jet after 10 minutes of gameplay. And another thing I'm dying to see is the loading time. Now I'm guessing having this kind of tech is going to improve to load things a lot quicker. Uh, possibly get rid of it completely, 
which has been a wish list for me for a long, long time. And I really hope Sony is finally fixing this acoustic problem as well as pretty much getting rid of the loading screen time. Also hoping most PS4 titles can be played on this console or else I will be very, very angry. Accessories also look super modern and clean like that Pulse 3D headset, which isn't foldable by the way. The dual controller, which also has a built-in mic, I believe, which is awesome. The new docking system for dual charging is pretty sweet. This console also has a meter controller, which is new. If you're going to be like me and buy all these accessories, I'm guessing you'll expect it to put aside roughly about a grand, I would say. Before I wrap it up, let's talk about the games and let me tell you guys, I'm super, super excited for the Spider-Man Miles Morales. Looks insanely good as you can see in the game in action. The other game that I am looking forward to is the Gran Turismo, which has been with me since the PlayStation 1. And I wonder in the future if they do make a steering wheel kind of for the PS5, what it will look like. Possibly black and white, like the rest of the accessories. I'm not so sure. Well, we'll see. Comment below your thoughts on what you think of the accessories. They also showed us some other games which look awesome, but not my cup of tea, but you never know. They've also confirmed some of its upcoming titles like Watch Dogs Legion, Gods of Monsters, Rainbow Six Quarantine, and the Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which sounds super cool. Overall, I'm pretty excited, guys. I think it says to be released around December. I'm excited for better looking console, more realistic games, and the gear like the headphone and the controller, which I know I'll be pre-ordering. But let me know what you guys think and your thoughts and comment in the section below. Do you think the PlayStation 5 is overrated already? Or do you think it's going to change the gaming industry? I'm hoping to have my hands on one as soon as pre-orders are available so I can review it for you guys. So subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'm Sarkis and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.